So this is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to do about books that I've recovered from a huge collection that I have in my garage. And as some of you who really know me know, I've been taking a really long time to clean out my garage. I've made great progress, don't get me wrong, but still a lot of work to do to clean out the garage. But as I've been cleaning out the garage, and I have again, I have a huge collection of books in the garage, still a pretty large collection of books in the garage. I've started to recover some of those books and, and bring them inside so I can organize them a little bit better and to uh, make sure that I start to read because I, I made a pledge uh, sometime last year in 2019 that I was going to slow down buying books or acquiring books in one way or another and start to read some of the books that I have in my collection because I have quite a few books in my collection that I have not read but I've grabbed because I thought man this sounds really good in, in one way or another through you know book sales uh, or through Amazon through um, used bookstores through flea markets um, traditional bookstores grocery stores wherever else you can buy books you know I found ways to acquire books and so I'm gonna just show you some of the books that I got in the latest grab from the books from the books in the garage so I'm gonna start showing you some of them here and I'm gonna start with a classic one right here Agatha Christie murder on the Orient Express and this is one that of course I think that it's virtually impossible for you to know much about um, Agatha Christie and not have probably heard of Murder on the Orient Express. Um, it's interesting thing about this particular story is that I have seen bits and pieces of the movie even though I've tried not to. And one thing about me, I'll tell you one thing about me in movies is that I do not like jumping into the middle of a movie. If I'm going to watch a movie, I want to watch it from the beginning, especially if it's something like this that's uh, a murder mystery. So anyway, I have this classic, and I, and I saw this uh, in uh, the garage, and it's a, it's a pretty, it's a fairly old copy. It's, uh, you know, it's one of those pocket books when you could buy a book for $2.95, which is uh, kind of difficult to do for the most part nowadays. But um, it's really a, kind of a cool cover right there. You see the knife and then you see uh, the image of the train right there at the, at the bottom as well. So actually a pretty cool cover right there. And um, you know, it's part of a series. So this is one that I thought was really cool. So I brought it in because I think eventually I wanna to try to read an Agatha Christie book. I've actually never read an Agatha Christie book. So that's an interesting uh, little note there. And uh, you can't see it behind me, but I do have some Agatha Christie books behind me, some other ones um, that I have in the collection. So this is one that I found in the collection that I thought was kind of interesting. This next one here, and not all of these, I, I will tell you first of all, not all of these are going to be books you're going to be, oh, yeah, man, I knew about that one. Yeah, you got that one, too. So a lot of them aren't going to be like that. A lot of them are just books that I thought, um, for one reason or another, would be kind of interesting. And so I just decided to, to pick it up. So this one right here is called Bloodshot. And uh, it's um, a mystery that I thought was uh, kind of cool. I'm going to read a little bit of the description part so you can kind of maybe get an idea, if you know me, why I picked this book up. Bloodshot begins innocently enough when V.I. attends the reunion of her championship basketball team and Caroline, a childhood friend who organized the event, asks V.I. a professional favor. Find my father for me. So you can see a couple of elements in this book that really kind of grabbed me and you know I like sports of course and I like a good mystery and uh, I thought you know this sounds like really cool and uh, it just really grabbed my attention and so I had a chance to, to grab this one um, I think I got this from a book club um, but I, I can't say that I remember that 100% but I do think this was one that I found in a book club that I picked up and I'm kind of glad I picked it up even though I haven't read it yet I'm still thinking that this is a sounds like a pretty interesting book to me this one uh, is called Color of Justice by Gary Hardwick and I got this one actually pretty good price right there you can see 
Got it for uh, $4.99, so uh, picked that up for a good price. I got this at a uh, bookstore in around the Detroit area at a um, outlet mall bookstore, and I thought, man, this sounds really cool. And so um, again, I'm going to read just the first paragraph here in the book description, and I think you'll get a feel for why I picked up this book. Detroit detective Dan Cavanaugh is a white Irish Catholic cop who has been raised in the dangerous bosom of the inner city. He speaks and acts with the unmistakable attitude of a black man, which has made him an enigma to his colleagues and a legend on the street. But lately, Kavanaugh has come under fire. His alleged use of excessive force has placed him under the intense scrutiny of his department's superiors. He has been rocked by a devastating and suspicious personal tragedy. His living African-American girlfriend is growing distant and a horrific double homicide is threatening to push him over the edge. So there's several elements here in this book that, that really grabbed me right off the bat. Um, it's, you know, it's got Detro a Detroit element. I'm from Detroit, so um, that's something that certainly appealed to me. Um, you, you had situations going on with the police, and this was a book I, I got a long time ago. Um, trying to look and see how old this book is but I, I got this book a long time ago probably probably more than 10 years ago that I, I picked up this book and uh, it looks like it was uh, copyrighted in 2002 so it's actually that might have been around the time that I picked this book up uh, or probably shortly thereafter um, this book by the way has got some pretty nice reviews on the back including one from the Detroit News um, so it's a pretty high praise for this book. Again, Color of Justice and, uh, you know, seeing the Detroit element was something that grabbed me right off the bat. And, um, you know, you got the relationship element, of course, and then you got the uh, police element that I thought was kind of interesting as well. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and, and pick this one up and grab it. Plus, it was, it was a good deal, you know, $4.99. That's, uh, that's a pretty good deal. So it... Um, is retailed for $24.95. So that was a pretty good deal to pick this one up. So I was really glad that I had a chance to pick up that one. So here's another one that is really interesting. And this is, um, I don't even know if this is like young adult. This is probably, you can see right now, I got some pictures that I had in here as bookmarks here. So that's actually kind of interesting. Um, sometimes you find some interesting bookmarks in your, in your books here as you pick them up. But this one is called uh, Strike Two. And um, I like a lot of sports fiction, so um, when I saw this one, I thought, you know, this could be pretty interesting, um, even though, you know, young adult is not really something that's for everybody, um, if you consider this young adult. Some people might consider this more, um, more of a children's book, um, but I'll read a little bit uh, of the excerpt here, and I think maybe you'll get a, a feel, or I'll explain why this book was particularly interesting for me. Um, it says, to Gwen, summer means playing softball, spending every day with her best friend, cousin Jess, and watching 4th of July fireworks from the top of the Press Gazette building where her dad and his twin brother, Uncle Dave, both work. Okay, so you get an element right there, the journalism. And I used to be in journalism, and so uh, I have an appreciation for that because I came up through journalism in college and then professionally uh, after college. Okay, so it goes on. The summer sure isn't going as planned, though. The newspaper is on strike, and everybody in town seems to be taking a side. It's union versus management, even within Gwen's softball team and within her own family, too. Uncle Drew is management. Dad is union. So they're on opposite sides of the, of the coin here. And once the battle lines have been drawn, they're almost impossible to erase. But Gwen insists on trying. After all, everything depends on it. So you, you, you have this element, you have the family conflict, of course. You've got the newspaper business, journalism, which is something that's really cool and important to me, which I really like. So, And then you got the softball angle right there because they, they got the, the little softball thing going there. So you get the sports fiction part that is cool for me as well, and I really like getting into that. So I thought, man, this is a, a good one right here. Uh, Amy Goldman Koss is the author of this book, and... Um, I was going to look and see when this book was uh, copyrighted here. So let's go here to the uh, handy dandy copyright page right here. And 
it is uh, pretty damn hard to find here. But 2001 is uh, when this book was copyrighted. So, um, yeah, it's really cool. You know, I like, I really kind of like the cover design too. It's got the uh, newspaper uh, prints in the background right there and talking about actually the strike, the union picketing and all that stuff. Uh, probably pretty hard to see there, but actually pretty nice, uh, pretty cool uh, cover design there. So anyway, this is one that was in the garage. I found it and uh, probably it looks like a really, really fast read right there. If you can uh, kind of see right there, very well spaced out. Uh, not a whole lot of pages to this book as well. Um, I'm looking here and it's, uh, yeah, a quick read, uh, a little over 130 pages. So I thought it'd be a pretty interesting one to eventually read. It's one that you could probably blow through in about an afternoon. Ah, here we go. Another classic right here. Another classic right here. John Steinbeck of Mice and Men. And this is one that's been in my collection for a very, very long time. This one's probably been in my collection uh, for, I'm gonna say probably close to 30 years I've had this in my collection. And I'm sad to say, I've actually never read this classic. Um, and I think uh, I'm gonna probably set aside some time to read this one. Um, kind of like the one that I just talked about. Um, this is a really quick read. Uh, it's just a little over 100 pages. Um, let's see, um, 118 to be exact. And it's, um, it looks like a, a fairly fast read. And uh, I'm excited about giving this one a try as uh, it, is a, it is a classic. It's one that a lot of people talk about, one that's taught in a lot of classes, or at least it used to be taught in a lot of classes when I was younger. Um, it was not taught in any class that I was in, but unless I slept through the class. But it is one that I thought was really interesting uh, when I found it in my collection and I decided to bring it in because I might uh, indeed try to give this a chance. Again, this is probably another one that you can probably knock out in probably an afternoon, a day, a day and a half, something like that. I have uh, another one right here that's um, kind of an interesting one here. Um, I went on a, uh, a kick of reading uh, from this author, Mike Lupica, who's a, a big sports writer for out of New York, and uh, he's a, kind of a big TV personality. At least he was uh, maybe uh, not quite as much now, but still uh, was a huge TV personality, probably uh, 10, 15 plus years ago. And I saw this book, and I you know, I went on a tear, and I'd read uh, a couple of his books already um, that I thought were, were really uh, interesting stories because he writes... Um, kind of a sports fiction type of um, series of stories. And I think I've read about, I want to say probably like four of his books. And uh, they were they were really good. Again, they're sports fiction books, and um, I've really enjoyed them. And uh, I thought, you know what, this is uh, one that uh, I thought would be a really cool one. I'll just kind of read you a little bit of this one, and you'll maybe begin get a feel for why I decided to uh, pick this one up. Danny Walker may be the smallest kid on the basketball court, but don't tell him that because no one plays with a bigger love of the game or a better sense of how to hit the open player with the perfect pass, which is why his world shatters when he is cut from the local travel team for being too small. Not just for any travel team either, the very best one his father had led to the national championship on ESPN when he was a kid. So you 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 get this kind of the underdog story, um, the kid that's too small, um, the kid that was told you can't uh, when he believed that he could, and uh, you get um, I, I don't know how I have no idea how the story is going to end up, uh, but it it sounded really good when I when I first heard about it, and again I was on a huge. Mike Lupica kick and uh, I read a number of his books um, that really had me just uh, excited to, to, to read more to to learn more about uh, or I shouldn't say learn more but to, to just 
see if there are more stories that uh, could, you know, maybe inspire or entertain me the way that some of the other ones that I had read had. And so uh, when I saw this one, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. Uh, I've got uh, another one in a separate collection of books that I'll do another video on at some point that uh, is really even more interesting to me than this one uh, by the same author as well. So um, be on the lookout for that video when that comes up uh, in the next stack of books that are recovered from my garage. The next one here, and I actually uh, don't really remember very much about this one, uh, but uh, I must have really liked it at the time when I picked it up. Um, it's called Shattered by Dick Francis. And uh, you can see it's got a, uh, you know, horse rider back there. And uh, looks like he's falling to pieces, or she, don't want to be sexist, falling to pieces right there on uh, the horseback right there. So kind of an interesting looking cover right there. And of course you got the picture of the author there on the back cover. So uh, that was, uh, not that I bought it for the back cover author picture, mind you. But I wanna read a little bit about this one from the description um, because I thought um, as I looked at it when I recovered it from the garage, I thought mm, that does sound kind of interesting. I can kind of see why I picked it up. Menace and murder go hand in hand in the electrifying new thriller from the grandmaster of crime fiction. When jockey Martin Stuckley dies after a fall at Chilatem, he accidentally embroils his friend Gerard Logan in a perilous search for a stolen videotape. Videotape, you can see how long ago this was. I mean, I'm sure some people are watching this like, what the hell is videotape? Uh, look it up. Logan is a glass blower on the verge of widespread acclaim. Long accustomed to the frightful dangers inherent in molten glass and in maintaining a glass-making furnace at seldom less than 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit, Logan is suddenly faced with terrifying threats to his business, his courage, and his life. Believing the missing videotape to contain priceless information and wrongly convinced that Logan knows where to find it, a vicious group of villains sets out to extract from him the answers he doesn't have. To survive, he realizes that he himself must sort out the truth. The final race to the tape throws more hazards in Logan's way than his dead jockey friend could ever have imagined. I'm not necessarily a big horse racing fan, but I thought it was kind of an interesting murder mystery type thing. And um, I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, and check it out and uh, pick it up. Um, my guess is, I, you know, I can't say with certainty how much I paid for this, but my guess is I probably got it for pretty cheap. And I thought, you know, it was worth the, the buy. I think I probably picked it up for probably a couple bucks or something like that. So um, it seemed like something that was you know, kind of worth picking up. Ah, this one is... Um, um, actually, none of the books that I've showed you so far, I've, I've read. I've read none of them, so um, for better or worse. I've read a lot of books. I just haven't read the ones that I've showed you. This one is one that I have read, and this one is um, one that I first read in high school. This is a, this is a nonfiction book. I first read in high school that, and uh, consequential. And that is the autobiography of Malcolm X is told to Alex Haley. And for many people, this is an essential, important book to read. Um, I didn't actually read this copy. This is a hardcover copy that I acquired later. I read a much smaller paperback copy uh, when I was in high school. And it was a, a really important read. And I think I read it again when I was in college. But this is... Um, this is a powerful story for those of you who, who know about Malcolm X or think you know about Malcolm X and, and what he did, what he experienced to, to get to where he is, or where he was, I should say. Um, this is an important book. Alex Haley does a, a fantastic job in uh, combining with Malcolm X to be able to, to share uh, Malcolm's incredible story. Um, and when you think of some of the things that people uh, of Malcolm's era went through to to just survive on a day-to-day -day basis, you really have to read books like this to really understand what people went through so you can understand better the mentality that some of them had that some people think is just really negative or just negativity driven. You gotta walk in their shoes a little bit. You can't fully walk in Malcolm's shoes 
or the shoes of his parents and the things that they went through, the way that they suffered, the way that uh, they died. But you can still get a feel for the Malcolm X experience and, and, and what and how his life was shaped uh, to get to him to be the person that he was before he was assassinated. So a very powerful book and uh, I would recommend uh, pretty much anybody read this um, because it's really a, it's an important book to really understand an important era of history, the civil rights era, uh, to understand um, the, the things that many people went through, people of color went through that in some cases is just absolutely unimaginable. And I return with another book from this stack of books that I actually have read, and that is Crooked Little Heart by Anne Lamott. And I'm going to read a pretty good chunk of the back cover of this because I think um, this is another one when you hear the back cover, you'll understand why I decided to, to pick this book up and maybe even why I decided to read this particular book. With the same winning combination of humor and honesty that marked her recent nonfiction bestseller, Operation Instructions and Bird by Bird, Anne Lamont's new novel gives us the exuberant, richly absorbing portrait of a family for whom the joys and sorrows of everyday life are magnified under the glare of the unexpected. Rosie Ferguson, in the first bloom of young womanhood, is obsessed with tournament tennis. Her mother is a recovering alcoholic, still grieving the death of her first husband. Her stepfather, a struggling writer, is wrestling with his own demons. And now Rosie finds that her athletic gifts, once a source of triumph and escape, place her in peril as a shadowy man who stalks her from the bleachers seems to be developing an obsession of his own. So this one um, is uh, not exactly a short book. It's um, you'll kind of see right here as I as I hold this up. This is not this is not a criticism either. It's 324 pages, but you can see that the it's pretty compacted in there uh, as far as the uh, the typeface and and the spacing. So um, there's a lot to this book, but it was a good story and I really enjoyed it. And it's, it hit a lot of the elements that really matter to me when I start looking at books that I'm going to. Um, strongly consider and so it had the you know the, the sports angle it had the obsession angle uh, it's got good subplots that I thought were really interesting and I, and I really enjoyed reading this book um, at the time sadly I, I really I don't remember this book as well as I wish that I did and it's one of the reasons I brought this book in is because I'm tempted to reread it um, as you can see though this book is uh Kind of gotten beaten up a little bit over the years. <laughs> so it, was, it took some abuse because I take a long time to read. Uh, but this is a really, it was, I remember it being a really good story that I enjoyed. And I was really glad that I read it. And I brought it back in because I do think I'm going to take another crack at some point at uh, reading this book and to um, kind of get back into what I really liked about this book at the time that I originally read it. And last but not least in this collection is Girls in Trouble by Carolyn Leavitt. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. I uh, saw this book. First of all, the, the, the cover is, uh, it kind of is eye-catching a little bit. And I hope that doesn't creep people out. But it's just a, a very eye-catching cover there um, that, that really gets attention. Girl's in trouble, and you got a, a girl's legs, and she's uh, walking along. Uh, looks like a, a beam on a wooden fence right there, kind of a country fence. Um, but I thought uh, that was something that was uh, kind of attention-grabbing right off the bat. So I'm going to read a little bit of this uh, book description so you can maybe uh, figure out why I picked up this particular book. Sarah is 16 and pregnant. Her once devoted boyfriend seems to have disappeared and her only option appears to be an adoption with George and Eva, an older couple desperate for a child. But after the birth, it's clear that Sarah has a bond with a child that Eva can't duplicate. And when Sarah can't let go, Eva and George make a drastic decision with devastating consequences for all of them. 
So you got some really uh, powerful elements there in this in this book, and it's actually one of the shortest um, book descriptions, uh, but it's impactful. It's like you know one paragraph, but it's really tight and com impactful, and you just you get all the elements of the story. So uh, well done, whoever wrote the, the description for this book, because it's uh, very short, but it's very thorough and impactful. And so um, great job there. But I, you know, I, I read that and I thought, man, this is really, really good. This is really intriguing to me. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. This is another one that I got for, for relatively cheap. Um, it's uh, listed at uh, 25 bucks. I did not pay 25 bucks for it. Uh, not to say it's not worth 25 bucks uh, to some people, but I, um, picked this one up because I thought, man, this this sounds really, really good. And eventually, I probably will read this, as I've said for many of these other books that are in the collection. Uh, I'm going to try to hold off on new book purchases as much as I can. Yeah, right. But I want to try to read and, and clean up some of the books uh, in my collection that I haven't read that were really good, that intrigued me at one point, and I got, but I did not finish. So the goal is going to be to finish some of these books of uh, the collection Recovered from the Garage, Volume 1 of the collection covered, Recovered from the Garage, other volumes to come. Please like this video if you could. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you would be so inclined and hit the bell button for notifications and check out other videos in this collection as I continue to kind of explore some of the books in the collection that I have and also review some of the books that I have read uh, in a little bit more thorough detail. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and hope to see you back soon.